you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus.
Father God in heaven, we thank you. Lord, we bless you, we praise you, we honor you, Father God, for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us a mighty long way. Now, Lord, we come, Father God, realizing that you are the one who speaks to us. You speak to us through your word. Now, Father God, we ask you to bless us by way of your word. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless us to be about your business. And bless us, Lord, that as we go through your word on Bible study tonight, that you will be a blessing to us and that we will bless and glorify your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. certainly brought us. He has Amen. brought us not just from a mighty long way. He's brought us all the way. Thank you, Sister Davis, for reminding us that Jesus is the one who has brought us. He has brought us. Tonight, our Bible study focuses on giving thanks, of course. We're looking at Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. If you would just allow me to interfere with your cooking for a little while tonight, <laughs> just allow me to interfere for a little while in your cooking tonight, just a little while. I want to call your attention to Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Jesus is here and he, uh, he is entering into a dialogue with a group of lepers, <laughs> with a group of lepers. Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 19. Well, the Spirit of the Lord led Sister Davis to read this tonight, not knowing that I will be covering this tonight. She read the first part of this pericope. I want to deal with the whole pericope on tonight. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. <clears throat> Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. When you found it, you would discover these words. Now it happened, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then he entered a certain village. There met him 10 men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at the feet at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found to return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. King James says, Your faith has made you whole. When we look at this particular pericope, we find Jesus dealing with lepers. These 10 men had bodies that were being attacked by leprosy. You see, leprosy created 
scabs and sores throughout the body. Leprosy paralyzed the very nerves of every extremity of the body. Lepers were not to come near people who were not um, suffering from leprosy. Lepers were oftentimes put aside into their own little camp they didn't have a choice of coming in and mingling with other people. But the text declares that this was an occasion where the lepers realized that they couldn't go close. So the text says they stood afar off. The Bible begins this particular pericope by saying, now it happened. When the text declares that now it happened, that means get ready, something very, very important is about to take place. These lepers were on the, on the edge of desperation. These lepers had a reason to give up on life. These lepers did not have a vaccine for a cure. Neither did these lepers have a pill that they could swallow and get over their leprosy. Mm -hmm. Lepers were put away sometime in a camp all by themselves just to be put there to die. Mm -hmm. These lepers had no hope to live. They had no desire to, to get back into the mainstream of life except they built themselves up in hope. So we see these 10 who did not give up. These 10 trusted Jesus. These 10 had heard about Jesus the Christ. So much so until when he came to a certain village and he saw these 10 lepers, these 10 lepers cried out with a loud voice. They raised their voices. They lifted their voices. Verse 13 says, they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. These lepers gives us hope today. They give us hope that even in the midst of hopeless situations, we need to call on Jesus. The lepers gives us hope in the fact that even when there is no hope for us, we need to believe that Jesus offers hope. Yes, these lepers give us hope and, and, it, and they tell us and they point us to Jesus so much so until they call him Jesus, the master. Mm -hmm. Certainly Jesus is the master of all sickness mm -hmm. because he's the master of healing. Jesus is the master and he has power above any power that you can ever dream of. The songwriter says, there's no other power, Holy Ghost power, mm -hmm. Jesus power that can fix our situation. He looks, he looks here, uh, we look here at this text and it says that, that these lepers that have been given up by society to die, they had hope in Jesus. Somebody listening to me tonight need to hope in Jesus. Yes. Your circumstances may be bad. Your situation may be awful. Conditions may be going downhill fast. But these lepers in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, show us that when there is no hope, we have to hope against hope. Yes, we have to hope without hope. We have to have faith that hope is present. And that presence of hope lies in Jesus the Christ. Amen. So they cry out to Jesus and they say to him, have mercy on us. When he says have mercy, they admit that they don't deserve it. They admit that they have not done anything to make it come. They want mercy because they know that mercy will suit their case. Somebody listening to me tonight know, understand, have come to the conclusion that mercy will suit their case. If God has mercy on us, then whatever we're going through can be fixed. 
And we realize that we need, we need God's mercy so much so until we know there's nothing we can do to yes. gain that mercy. We have to depend on Jesus. He said, they say, master, have mercy on us. Jesus, master, the son of God, have mercy on us. Master, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy on us, master. They create a noise. And they created such a noise until it got Jesus' attention. The lepers teach us tonight that we need to make sure that we're willing to create noise if it takes noise to get Jesus' attention. That's right. It says, it's a master, have mercy on us. They lifted up their voices. They cried out to him, have mercy. The next thing I want you to see here is they ask for mercy where mercy can be given. Mm -hmm. They didn't call those who did not have mercy. They didn't call those who, who was not able to give them mercy. Mm -hmm. They called on Jesus, the mercy giver, the one who has mercy, even in his person. Verse 14 says, so when he, Jesus, saw them, when Jesus saw them, let me tell you, you need to make sure that Jesus sees you. Amen. Don't worry about being seen by other people. Don't dress to be seen by others. Right. Don't talk to be seen by others. Don't act out to be seen by others. What you need to make sure you do is be seen by Jesus. Right. So when Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. Go and show yourselves to the priests. Go and show yourselves to the preacher. When you look at Leviticus chapters 13 and 14, you will find out that it was the priests that pronounced healings upon the people. If you were once blind and couldn't see, if you were once a leper and never healed, you had to go to the priests and the priests would announce your healing. So keeping in step with the Jewish custom, Jesus says to these lepers, go now and show yourselves to the priests. And the Bible says, so it was, in verse 14, so it was, that they went, and as they went, they were cleansed. Mm -hmm. Let me just share with you. You may not have your blessings right now, but when you obey Jesus, mm -hmm. he's able to bless you as you go. You see, you can get blessed, you can receive your blessings as you move. You are given more than you were given before you got started. Right. Let me say that another way. I'm saying to you today, you receive more in your going than you do before you get started. The problem with a lot of people today, they won't get started. You have to have a blessing as you move. Why would God even bless you if you're not doing anything with what yeah, you have? But as you move, as you go, as you participate with God and who God is, God is able to bless you in your going, in your blessing, in your walking, and in your obedience. God is able to bless you in your process of going. In verse 15, it says, and one of them, now 10 got healed, 10 got blessed. But 15 says, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. Right. 10 got healed. 10 received the blessing. 10 were, were, were cured from, from this leprosy. And we find out as we look at this word in the original Greek form, this word healed. When we look at this word in the original text, this word heal means to be cured. This word heals 
mean to that the leprosy was discontinued. This word heal means that the leprosy was terminated. This word heal means that the leprosy and the lepers were cured of their disease. But there was one, verse 15, Luke chapter 17, verse 15, there was one who, when he saw he was healed, <clears throat> the moment he saw he was healed, the Bible says he, re he returned. He returned back to Jesus. He returned and with a loud voice glorified God. He went back to where he was. He went back to where Jesus was. And the Bible says he glorified God with a loud, thunderous voice. Let me just share with you. Sometimes you need to praise God out loud. Yes. Sometimes you ought to get to a point in your life where, where others can hear you praising him. Sometimes you just have to raise your voice and just thank God for what God has done. The text declares that this leper raised his voice. And when he raised his voice, he glorified God. My next point to you tonight is the fact that, that you need to know who you're glorifying. Mm -hmm. And who you're glorifying ought to be God and God himself. So the leper, this one out of 10. So does it suggest to us today that when we get 10 people together, there's only one that's thankful? When we get 10 people together that are healed, 10 people together who are blessed, we can count on at least one out of 10? Mm -hmm. Or can God count on 10 out of 10? Mm -hmm. If we look at the text, the text declares that only one out of 10 thought enough to turn back around. Mm -hmm. And thank God, thank Jesus for their lives. <laughs> Only one thought enough to thank Jesus for, for the ability to keep on living. Is that you today? Is that you? You're the one who will think enough of what God has done for you just to say, Lord, I thank you. Is it you today who will thank God for what he has done or will you spend your time moaning and groaning about what you don't have? Let me tell you, the leper, the leper didn't talk about the spots on him. He didn't talk about the, the eternal nerve damage that had taken place. This leper, when he was healed, he came back to thank God for what God has already done. Yes, sir. Will you thank him? We're in that season. We're in that season where families get together and they eat big dinner and they pray long prayers just to say, Lord, I thank you. Let me just say to you today. God has spared your life. He has spared your life one more again. And that and that alone is enough to say, Lord, I thank you. Yeah, we ought to glorify him. We ought to praise him. We ought to thank him. We ought to be thankful for family, thankful for friends, thankful, thankful for another chance to inhale and exhale. Thankful for another chance to be out of the hospital instead of in the hospital. Thank you for another chance, Lord. I may not have all that I want, but thank you for what I have. Yes, this leper, one out of 10, just one out of 10 came back with a loud voice and glorified God. Not only did he come back with a loud voice and glorify God, he didn't just speak it. He also demonstrated. Look at what it says. Verse 16 says that this leper, this is Luke 17, verse 16. This leper fell down on his face at his feet. He fell down on his face at Jesus' feet. And he did what? He thanked him. Not only does a thankful person cry with a loud voice, thank you but he will demonstrate how humble he is and how thankful he is by even falling on his face at the feet of Jesus saying, Lord, I thank you. Look at what he says. He, he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. He, he fell down. 
And when you fall down, you make sure you fall down at the feet of Jesus. Yes. People are going through some things right now. And as you move through some things right now, you need to make sure that you're falling at the feet of Jesus the Christ. He is the great healer. He is the great physician. He's the one that you ought to be thinking. Doctors do a lot of great things. God has given them knowledge to perform great surgeries, to, to prescribe great medications that do us great things. But Jesus is the true healer. Yes. He is the one who makes us well. He is the one that makes us whole. The Bible says this one came back, fell down on his face. He fell down at the feet of Jesus and he began to thank him. What has God done for you that you have not thanked him? What has God done for you for which you have not been grateful? We oftentimes talk about our children not being grateful for what God has done and what we have done for them. But I submit to you today, there are some folk who have been Christians a long time. Mm -hmm. There are people that are churchgoers. There are people that, that scream hallelujah on Sunday, but they are not grateful for the little things that God has done. And therefore, they are not grateful for the big things that God has done. Don't wait till you get a terminal illness to be thankful. Don't wait till you get kicked out your house and into a new house to be thankful. Yes. Don't wait till you get the right husband, the right child, the, the right thing going on in your life to be thankful. Thank God right now for whatever is going on in your life. Mm -hmm. Because God gives us the motivation and he yes. gives us the ability. He gives us the strength to keep moving forward, even in the midst of our obstacles. I told you before, and I say again, Sometimes God calms the storm. Mm -hmm. Other times God calms his child in the midst of the storm. Yes. I'm so glad that even in the midst of the storm, God has a way of calming me down. Right. I don't have to blow up. I don't have to cuss him out. God can calm the child in the midst of the storm. Yes. The Bible says in verse 16 that he was a Samaritan. Now, Samaritans are considered foreigners. Com Samaritans are considered half-breeds. Samaritans are the result of somebody jumping the fence or somebody crossing the railroad track or somebody crossing the street or somebody walking or swimming across the bayou. Samaritans were half-breeds. Samaritans were not pure Jew. But this Samaritan took on the Jewish custom. And let me just say to you today, you have to leave some traditions behind just to thank God for who he is. Yes. Today, today, today in the Ahmaud Arbery case, the Ahmaud Arbery case, today, the moment that the guilty verdict was read, the daddy couldn't contain himself. It's not that he didn't think that the judge wouldn't kick him out. It's not that he didn't think the judge was for real when he says no outburst. It's because he got to a point where he's been going through things for month after month and all of a sudden God answers his prayer and he can't contain himself and he said, oh yes, hallelujah. He says, oh yes, woo. -hoo. And it's at a point in our lives Regardless of the tradition, regardless of where we are, we ought to thank God for what he has already done. Verse 17 says, so Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Where are those nine people that was cleansed along with this one? Jesus want to make sure that you understand that every single person that he has blessed ought to be thankful. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants us to know that every person that has been cleansed, every person that has been washed, every person that has been saved ought to be grateful for what God has already done. Mm -hmm. He asked the question, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? 
were there not any found who returned to give God glory except this foreigner? What he's saying is those who abide in the Jewish faith, those who abide by the Jew, Jewish custom, custom didn't even turn around to say thank you. It, it, it reminds us that that trouble comes to the privileged as well as the marginalized. Mm -hmm. Trouble doesn't have a color. Trouble is not concerned with your nationality. Trouble is not concerned with the hue of your skin. All of us find ourselves in trouble. And when Jesus gives us mercy, we ought to be humble enough, grateful enough to come back and say, Lord, I thank you. But Jesus points out here that the foreigner is the one that came back. The one who you wouldn't think that would give honor to God. The one who you would think would just take it and run with it and, and never turn around. He's the one that thought enough of his blessing, thought enough of his healing to come back and say, Lord, I thank you. Verse 19, and I'll leave you alone. Luke 17, 19. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. King James would put it this way. Your faith has made you whole. I told you earlier that this word heal means to be cured. But Jesus uses a different word when he talks about being made well. He doesn't use the same phrase. He doesn't use the same word. He uses a, a different word when he talks about being healed. Now he uses the word to be made whole. So these nine got healed, meaning that they were cured. Mm -hmm. But when he talks about being made well, when he talks about being made whole, he brings into this idea, the idea of being saved, the idea of being kept safe, the idea of being sound, the idea of being rescued from danger and destruction. So those who were healed, they got what they wanted. They received the blessing of being cured. But the one that went back to say thank you, he was made whole. He was made well. And this word uh, whole, this word well, means that he was saved. He, is, he has now the ability to be kept saved. He has now uh, been soundly rescued from danger and destruction. In other words, he'd been preserved. And he's been preserved from now on. Let me just say to you today, there may be somebody listening to me today who's been healed. You've been healed from a particular thing. And because you've been healed, you are thankful and you're grateful. You're not just like the nine. You, you're like the one. You are grateful. You are thankful. And you, you have cried out, Lord, I thank you and I glorify you. Yeah, this is the right season. I mean, we got the season down right. This is Thanksgiving. We all ought to give thanks. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, annually, year round, every minute, every second, yes. every moment of the day, we ought to be thankful to God for what he has already done. Because yes. not only has he healed us, he has also made us whole. And being made whole, he preserves us. He protects us. Being made whole, he, he delivers us and he saves us. Being made whole, he, he rescues us from danger and rescues us from destruction. That's what God did over 2,000 years ago. Man was in a terrible fix. Man was suffering from an uncurable or incurable disease. It was called sin. It's still called sin. Man was on 
his way to hell. I said man was on his way to hell. Man was suffering from a disease that was going to take him down and there was no way out. But God created a way for man to not only just be healed, to not only just be cured, but he created a way for man to be saved, to be preserved, to be protected, to be kept saved. That's what it says when it says he was made whole. He, it says that, that he was made well. This word well, this word whole means that he's being preserved. Therefore, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ made it possible that not only can you be healed today, but you can be well. You can be made whole. He did it by taking a tree, a cross, a stick, and took your sins and my sins and went up to Calvary's hill. He died that day on that hill. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. He died until one centurion soldier or a group of centurion soldiers cried out, surely this must be the Lamb of God. I suggest to you today, it is Jesus, the master, the master healer. Jesus, the one who makes us well. Jesus, the one who cleanses us, died on a skull hill called Calvary. They took him off the cross, laid Jesus in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he got up and gave Joseph back his brand new tomb. And if you can believe the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you can be saved right here, right now. If you can believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, God gave his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, to protect us, to deliver us, to make us whole, to make us well. If you can believe the story that Jesus died for your sins, was buried on a barred, he was buried in a barred tomb, but early that third day, he rose with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. Let me tell you, today the, the invitation is given to you. The invitation is given. The door of the church is open. You can be saved right here, right now, today. If you just trust him. If you believe him. Just believe the story. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead, just bow your head with me right now. Invite him into your life. Will you join me by saying, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for, your, for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe that if you prayed this prayer, honestly believing the story and trusting the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we believe that you are born again. We believe that if you die this moment, you will find yourself in heaven. There are others of us who struggle with sin daily. If you struggle like I do, like others do, like we all do, I want to pray with you and ask God that he will reconnect us. Father God, we thank you now for those of us who follow away from grace. Those of us who who fall into sin, those of us who seek after sin, those of us that sin sneaks up on. Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Bless us. We ask you to bless us to be made whole. Bless us to be made well. 
turn us around. Give us the, the blessings that only you can give. Have mercy upon us. And Lord, we thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There may be others of you who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction, where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is giving the invitation for you to join a good Bible teaching church. If you want to join us in boxes and let us know you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston, or you can join us on Sunday morning for nine o'clock Sunday school and 10.30 a.m. Sunday worship service. Every Sunday, for Sunday school and worship service. Thank you so much for joining us here in Bible study tonight. Starting next week, we'll be in the church face-to-face -face Bible study. Please join us at 715 every Wednesday night for Bible study. We're also calling all vaccinated choir members back to the choir stand, those who are fully vaccinated. Please come Wednesday night for Bible study first, then for choir rehearsal immediately after. We are preparing again for our grand entrance. In 2007, we had a grand entrance where the entire church walked into a brand new building to where we're located now. So we've been out of church for a while, almost two years now. So we see fit to have a grand entrance back into the church service. So we begin uh, next Wednesday, Bible study at the church, choir rehearsal at the church, so we can have our grand entrance on second Sunday in December. We went in in 2007, second Sunday in December. We wanna have another grand entrance this year, second Sunday in December. Come on, join us. All vaccinated, fully vaccinated choir members are asked to come on back and join us in choir. Those of you who've been, been wanting to sing, have been singing in the shower, singing at home and, and looking at the walls and singing, come on back. And we're gonna have Bible study, then we're gonna have choir rehearsal for those who, who can sing and those who've been wanting to sing. Come on back and be a part. That's next Wednesday, December 1. Come on back and be a part. In our prayer time, <clears throat> we want to remember Sister Russell, Sister Bobby Russell, the Russell family and the Crump family as they go through these moments of bereavement. Sister Russell, Sister Russell wor worshiped with us this past Sunday as we gave away the Charles E. Crump uh, Servant of the Year Award. She was there, she, she made the sacrifice to be there as her husband was, was hospitalized, she came and, and worshiped with us. Well, he's gone on to be with the Lord. And so we want to lift up Sister Bobby Russell, the Crump family and the Russell family. We also want to look up, uh, lift up Sister Shirley Bentley, who's, who's just out of another surgery. We want to pray for her and lift her before the Lord. And it's now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. You can give by two means. One, you can give by mailing your offering to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Four or five nine, or you can zell your offering, your your tithes, your love gift in to zell. Our zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Let me thank those who joined us on last week to celebrate. Sister Davis and my appreciation, 17 years. Our church calls time out, as Pastor Rose says. They call time out every time this year to appreciate us 
and a great program. I want to thank the New Beginning Church. I want to thank uh, Holy Trinity and Pastor and Sister Rose. I want to thank our family and friends for all of your gifts, all your participations, all your prayers. Thank you so much for being a part of our church. We're looking forward to High Attendance Day, second Sunday. Come on, come on in this house, come on in. Second Sunday, our grand interest service, our second grand interest service into the church. COVID-19 has, has gotten us to a point where we have a need to have a grand interest. Come on back, come on back and be a part. We're looking forward to the choir stand, uh, filling up again with all fully vaccinated uh, choir members or those who've been wanting to sing in the choir. Come on, be a part. We're looking forward to, to being a blessing to the Lord and looking forward to being a blessing to the community. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you, Father God, for 17 successful years of uninterrupted ministry. God, we thank you, Father God, for the example of Sister Bobby Russell and Brother Lojack Russell. Thank you for them blessing so many, Father God, for, in, for impressing the importance of marriage upon so many couples. We ask you to bless the Crump family and the Russell family as they go through these moments of bereavement. We pray for Sister Shirley Bentley. We pray, Father God, that you continue to heal and touch her body. Bless her, Father God, that she will be about your business and that you will give her strength, Father God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. We thank you, God, for food. We thank you for clothing and for shelter. God, we thank you for a place to worship. We thank you for saving our souls. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us. We thank you for allowing our lives to roll on just a little while longer. Now, Lord, we praise you just for being God. And we thank you for who you are and what you do. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us say together, amen, amen, and amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we're reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. And happy Thanksgiving.